One of the last things I want to talk around in this, this working capital situation that it's really I see a lot of companies get upside down where they match sources and uses of funds inappropriately. Let me talk about what's inappropriately. Um, long-term financing things need to be matched with long-term financing. Uh, things like equipment, things like building. Many times I've seen people take working capital financing deals, revolvers, short-term in nature, and use them to buy pieces of equipment, long-term in nature, pieces of equipment that'll take one year, two years, take three, four, five years to pay back, okay? And they've taken a one-year kind of uh, short-term revolver financing and used that money against these longer-term capital uh, ploys. And now, when the capital maybe doesn't take off in year one or year two or year three, they end up with a real strain on their working capital management because they've taken those funds and they've used them for these longer type of things. So one of the things as the instructor here, I'm trying to make sure I, I kind of imply to you is you want to use revolver or financing or, or working capital lines for short-term things in nature, accounts receivable, accounts payable, payroll, AR, fund those things through those types of revolvers. If you're going to have equipment financing and building finance, you want to do term debt and you want to do it longer term. So you want to think through all that, okay? Because uh, it's very critical uh, that you can, get, you can get yourself upside down because when we started this, we talked about, well, Bernie, tell me about, you know, where all the money went. Well, some of the reasons where all the money went was some of it went to accounts, to inventory. Some of it went to AR. Some of it went to the fact that I took short-term revolver money and I uh, bought two extruders that are gonna get paid off over five years. Well, in year two, they're gonna get paid off over four years. And year three, it's gonna be three. You know, so it's one of those things that the money's not here because it's there. And uh, when I'm trying to make payroll, that ends up being a very difficult situation, okay? So short-term financing needs with short-term sources, long-term financing needs with long-term sources. So uh, I want to kind of go back and think, uh, kind of summarize what we're talking about here. We're talking about working capital management and how I can help you to improve your working capital management. There's a handful or a dozen, uh, probably somewhere between a handful and a dozen things that you'll want to think about and remember. One, you want to get this into plain English. So you want to be doing your formulas, doing your efficiency ratios, converting those working capital day calculations, AR number of days, inventory number of days, AP number of days, to days calculations so you can communicate with your management team, with your client. Listen, we have... Uh, 68 days in accounts receivable. We have 148 days in inventory. Those are clear English kind of translations that you can make for people that they can say, hmm, I can see where the money's going. I can understand that that money's not being used to generate sales. So let's talk about how we might make some of our accounts receivable uh, days shorten. So if I'm at 68, again, the whole goal here is better. Right, so if you made if you made each one of these numbers 10% better every year, you'd be moving in a positive direction. So 68 days to 62 days to 50 some days to down to down to 50 days. After three or four days, three or four years, you'd be in the ballpark of okay. Now I'm like everybody else, but you can't jump from a company that's doing 68 day accounts receivable down to 45. It's not going to work right? You're going to lose too many customers. You're going to lose too much sales. So you've got to work in the context of how do we satisfy our customers' needs and then how do we bring in tighter working capital management. They have to work together. If you pull on one too hard, you're going to upset the other one, okay? So think about that from your accounts receivable standpoint. So now you've got your terms in, in plain English. You've explained to your management and now you figure out that your inventory days are 142 days. We talked about my hangar group where I wanted to be able to supply people the next day. Well, once I started figuring out there was seasonality trends, I didn't need 142 days. I needed 90 days of spring items in the spring and 90 days of, of uh, fall items in the fall. So it, it ended up cutting my inventory in half and still matching my needs for my customers. So I was able to turn the inventory actually when I got done because I turned so many uh, hangers over on a regular basis. 
I was turning the inventory probably twice as fast as I was when I got there at $6 million. So you, you want to think about some of those things and, and make those work for you and make those kind of processes improve. So again, 10% better every year on your inventory. So take that 142 days down 14 days and then down 14 again and then down 14 again. And sooner or later, you end up in a, in a realm where, okay, I can service my customer and I can afford this. In the short term, you want to go out and talk to some of your banks and lending institutions about revolving lines of credits based upon inventory and based upon accounts receivable. 